Well, guys, I have finally gotten back from the Snowflake Summit in Las Vegas. It was great to see giant signs from all the different data vendors just plastered all over Vegas. It was honestly really funny because I can't imagine how much they must have spent to ensure that every participant saw an ad about their data catalog. With my wonderful stay in Las Vegas, that was honestly extremely exhausting. I also sat on a panel with six other data experts and we just kind of talked about well in this case the modern data stack and one of the questions that came up which i believe is very valid was why does it seem like we're still dealing with the same problems we've been dealing with for honestly decades why are we still struggling to answer what churn is on a product or how many active customers we have personally i've dealt with these problems for at least the last 10 years and Honestly, if you've been in the data world longer, I'm sure you experienced it even more, but why? Let's talk about that today. Let's talk about why in this world, we're still dealing with the exact same data problems that we have been for the last few decades. Let's start with problem number one, which is developers like to develop. In a large company, this is often fine because you have a large organization that puts around best practices and, and hopefully decent CI, CD and all these, you know, all this bureaucracy. But when you're talking about mid market and SMBs or small to medium businesses, what often happens here is a developer or maybe a team of developers that might be small will put together some sort of infrastructure. And it works while that team is there. It works great. You know, they've, they've developed it. They're really smart. It's all based in code and then they leave. And now the next people that are hired by the company because the current leadership have no idea what's going on, uh, kind of look at whatever infrastructure was put into play and they either think it's old or they just disagree with the methodology. So what they do is they're like, well, we need to migrate off of this. So they now develop a new solution. And now the cycle continues. You're just constantly developing the same infrastructure over and over again. Also, sometimes you're just doing infrastructure for infrastructure sake, because maybe you're trying to get some sort of minuscule performance improvement. And since at this point, most engineers and developers only stay about 18, 24 months, this problem never really improves for some companies. I have at least three projects right now that are all because of this problem where some team of developers developed a set of data pipelines. It's in some esoteric random language or it's trying to use the newest, most modern solutions and no one really knows what's going on. So I'm kind of forced to come in and try to simplify it down so that anyone could maintain it in the future. Another problem is that businesses are constantly changing the underlying solutions that we pull data from. Like maybe you're using Salesforce at one moment and then suddenly the company is like, no, we're going to use some other tool. Or again, it might be something similar with like ERPs, not just CRM. In fact, I recently had a client that after I put about two months into developing their initial pipelines for their ERP system, decided they needed to switch their ERP system. So suddenly all my work was basically, well, garbage and I had to rework a lot of it. Luckily, I was using some solutions that made it really easy to switch, but it still took me uh, some time to, you know, switch over, change, change the logic, you know, rechange and rebuild views and all of that adds to the complexity of how do we keep track of all these metrics over time. So this is really common. Again, you're constantly doing migrations either uh, with ERPs and CRMs. Maybe you're changing the data pipelining tool. Maybe you're changing the data warehousing solution. But each of these changes breaks everything. And that reminds me, I'm going to give a few solutions at the end of this that I've kind of stolen uh, from Chad Sanderson, but I'll put up his uh, post while I'm kind of talking through this at the end. But the point is, all of these changes break things so very quickly. And at Facebook, it was actually very similar. Uh, oftentimes a software engineer or some sort of software engineering team would update an application. And then suddenly maybe you added a column or maybe you took away a whole table and it would break all the pipelines and they wouldn't tell data engineering. Nope, because that would slow down their progress and not get them their promotion that they wanted so badly. So they were never incentivized to really tell data engineering that, hey, we're changing something in our software application. Another major problem is a lack of process. In this case, I'm referring to a lack of process in metrics, but in general, it's broader than that. But let's just talk about metrics. If there is no clear process in terms of how you should define metrics, 
everyone's just going to kind of go at it the way they believe. One person might just store it somewhere in a Google Sheet or a Word document in terms of how they have to find a metric. Another person might comment it out in their SQL code and, and still another person might just write some SQL code and expect someone to know that they're defining some logic that defines a crucial KPI. If businesses don't provide processes in terms of how to create key performance indicators, what do they expect the output will be? Everyone, when given an ambiguous problem, will try to deal with it in their own ambiguous way. They're not going to know how to deal with it, but they're going to figure out, hey, this is how I've done it in the past. Or if you're just hiring, you know, someone out of college, they're going to have no idea what they should be doing. And this is why data teams need to provide a framework for both data engineers and data analysts in terms of how they should develop things like KPIs, data pipelines, tables. All of this needs to have some framework around it. Now, there is a risk here because when you go to larger enterprise companies, what often ends up happening or what happened with me is you'll want to do something simple like add a column to a table or maybe create a view in the data warehouse. But based on all of the extra layers of data governance and committees that have been created, it's probably going to take six months for that view to finally be productionized. Which, of course, your manager is not going to be okay with. So you're just going to end up creating a whole duplicate data warehouse, which I've seen happen, and just kind of build it on top of that instead. Yeah, and that's what happens when there's too much governance. So the interesting thing about process is that if you put too much, people will just work around it. But if you don't put any, people will have no idea what to do. So there is a balance here in terms of company size and how much process is involved. Finally, another common problem is merging companies answering the question of churn, especially maybe more broadly for the entire company, becomes all the more difficult if you've suddenly just bought six companies, all of which have different ERP systems or different CRMs, and that just causes a whole chaotic mess for the poor data team. They will be forced to scramble to figure out exactly what they need to kind of tie together, what needs to be removed or duplicated, and it just becomes chaotic for the next two years as everyone tries to kind of consolidate all of their data and ERP systems. And that's another kind of challenge that's harder to deal with in terms of like, what is the plan? The only thing you can really do in this case is try to create a plan to deal with the fact that you are very aware that you have multiple ERPs that need to be all consolidated very quickly. Now, when I posed these problems on LinkedIn, Chad Sanderson, which if you are unaware, is a great creator of content on LinkedIn, as well as he has a newsletter that he just started where he talks about some of these problems as well as possible solutions. One of the solutions he talked about is the fact that producers need to have some sort of contract with consumers to make sure everyone knows what's going on. In the fact that SLAs, at least in my world, tend to be more on the lines of, you know, when data will be delivered and how it will look like and quality and things of that nature. In this case, it's more in terms of what data will producers create and how will the consumers be consuming it? Is it incremental loads? Will they be pulling all of the data every time? What columns exist and what columns are being expected? All of this creates transparency and the ability to collaborate more easily. For anyone out there who feels like this is a lot of extra work, the other side of this is that you're going to have all of those committees and extra layers of bureaucracy that really will bog down progress, you know, for companies that are trying to move fast. There is a sliding scale, definitely, depending on the size of your company, on terms of how much bureaucracy is required. But especially if you're smaller, this is kind of a happy medium between some form of bureaucracy that will try to capture some of the chaos that is the data world, while also providing some transparency and communication and collaboration. Point two that he offers, at least based on my understanding, is that the services and applications that are producing data need to manage as much logic as possible. And you should avoid putting logic into, you know, some of the data pipeline and, and other further layers downstream. And this is something I've always believed in, you know, the, the more you can move away logic out of data pipelines, the better, the more you have it centralized in one place, the better, because the more and more you move that into multiple places, the more likely things break, the more likely you have to remember where logic exists and then update it every time an application is updated all of which becomes very painful for everyone and just induces bugs and errors everywhere. I have literally had to create notifications in my past life just to tell people that, hey, there was some sort of additional um, option or, or category that was added to a field that was some sort of dropdown because the software side wouldn't take that on. 
And instead, we had to kind of manage a table and continuously add in new possible logic in terms of what a new category was. And that's just asking for things to break that most likely, again, the application side won't tell you. Overall, we've been dealing with these same problems for decades. And I don't think I'm so arrogant to think that I know every answer. But I do know that we do need to think a little more broadly and that limiting our thoughts and our tables and our development to only the use cases and uh, reporting that we're going to build immediately will always cause problems in the future. I actually remember when I first started in the data world and obviously I didn't realize a lot of the problems that we were dealing with were problems that everyone around me had been dealing with for a decade at least if not more. And now getting older, it's funny how you just realize that there's just this constant repetition and cycle in terms of trying to deal with data problems. So that is why we continue to this day to struggle to answer the question, what is our company's churn and how many active customers do we have? Hopefully in the next few years, we can definitely simplify this problem. But until then, I pray that we all try to practice the best practices possible for the company size that we're at. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you next time. Thanks all. Goodbye.